This is called a unit circle because it has a radius of one unit. Okay, it has a radius of one unit. Um, so the radius is one. So let's go through and let's label the points that are on the axes. Okay, so if this has a radius of one, this point over here on the positive x-axis, just in geometric terms, what are its coordinates? What are its x and y coordinates? Zero. One, zero. Okay, its x-coordinate is one, its y-coordinate is zero. The point on the positive y-axis up here, in terms of just coordinate geometry, is the point zero, one. Its x is zero, its y is one. On the negative x-axis, we're talking ab about the point negative one, zero. And on the negative y-axis, we're talking about the point zero, negative one. Now, um, this is, the purpose of this is to help us with trig. We're always going to continue starting on the positive x-axis. So if we do that and we label, um, we always label this with uh, radians. So this angle starting on the positive x-axis to the positive y-axis is the angle uh, pi over 2. Okay, it is pi over 2. I will also label it with degrees. Okay, but usually we're just, we, we focus on the radians. Okay? So starting on the positive x-axis to the positive y-axis, that's a 90 degree angle, or pi over 2. If we start on the positive x-axis and go all the way to the negative x-axis, that's 180 degrees, or pi in radians. Okay, this should be, we've been doing these angles. Okay, we're just putting it all together. And to the negative y-axis, that is 3 pi over 2, or 270 degrees. And technically, we can label our positive x-axis here with four numbers, okay? We've got 0 radians, 0 degrees, if that... If we're just, if we start and stop in the same spot, and then if we go all the way around, we're talking about two pi radians, or 360 degrees. Okay. So technically that one can be labeled with four, four values there. Now let's look at the first quadrant. This is all based on these special angles that we've been doing. So that first line right there, that first line, and I'm trying to keep this color coordinated, so i got to check what I did here in a second. Okay, blue. Um, that first line represents an angle of 30 degrees, or pi over 6. Okay, so this is pi over 6, or 30 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and label the angles first and then we'll talk about their coordinates, okay? Um, the second line from the positive x-axis is a 45 degree angle or pi over 4 and the third one from the positive x-axis is a 60 degree angle or pi over 3. Notice that degrees and radians, 30 degrees goes with pi over 6, 60 degrees goes with pi over 3, it's kind of like the 3 and the 6 switch places. Okay. Now, we need to label these points as well. Well, they're not as cut and dry as the uh, points that are on the axes. Okay. So, let's use some trig. Okay. Let's go back to those triangles. Uh, that we looked at before, if I were to draw, try, now I wouldn't necessarily suggest drawing this on your picture because it will get very, very, very uh, crowded, okay? Um, but just kind of watch what I'm doing right here. If I draw a right triangle, this is my 30 degrees down here. I know I wrote it up here, but really this is the 30 degree angle, okay? It's the angle right down here. So, if I want 
want to identify the x coordinate right here. I know that my radius or the hypotenuse is 1. The x would be which side compared to this angle right here? The adjacent or the opposite? The adjacent, so that's talking about cosine. Well, we were supposed to memorize that, right? What's the cosine of 30 degrees? Square root of 3 over 2, okay? The cosine is the square root of 3 over 2. So that means that the x coordinate of this point right here is the square root of 3 over 2. Okay? If we want to talk about the y coordinate in relation to this 30 degrees right here, that's the opposite. So what's the sine of 30 degrees? 1 half. So that's the x and the y coordinate of that point right out there. So our points are in the form, the x coordinate is the cosine of the angle, the y coordinate is the sine of the angle. And the reason why it's that kind right of is because the hypotenuse is 1. Okay, the hypotenuse is 1. So we memorize sine and cosine of 30. If the hypotenuse is 1, then that means the opposite is 1 half the adjacent square root of 3 over 2. Now, I know a lot of people are visual, and this is how I remember the unit circle. If I'm imagining the unit circle in my mind, I know that, that 30 degrees is, is kind of a small angle right here. So my x coordinate is bigger than my y coordinate. Okay, my x coordinate is bigger than my y coordinate because 30 degrees is a rather shallow angle. Um, so let me just show you what the decimal value of the square root of 3 over 2 is. Okay. Um, the square root of 3 divided by 2 is 0.866, which is obviously much greater than 1 half, which is 0.5. So that's how I remember that the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2, and the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, because 30 degrees is this shallow angle, its x coordinate is bigger than its y coordinate. That's how I remember. Now, 45. This is the easy one. It's right smack dab in the middle of that quadrant. Okay, so that means its x and its y are equal. This is the one that's the square root of 2 over the square root of 2, or excuse me, the square root of 2 over 2. It's not a square root on the bottom. It may be 1. Okay, the cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. The sine is also the square root of 2 over 2. Now for 60 degrees, 60 is just like 30, but those two numbers switch places, okay? The two numbers switch places because if you think about it, in a right triangle, if you have a 30 degree angle, the other angle is 60 degrees. So depending on which perspective you're looking at, the two legs are, um, are the same length. It's just which one's the opposite, which one's the adjacent, okay? And again, looking at this visually, 60 degrees is a steeper angle, so its x coordinate is less than its y coordinate. So its x coordinate is 1 half, so that means its cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. Okay. Um, so what I've got here is just a neater more organized way of uh, what we just wrote, okay? Let's look at the second quadrant. <clears throat> okay, let's look at the second quadrant. So I just have our fresh picture, so we can, we can zone in on that. I have the first quadrant filled in. Um, let's start with the angles, okay? Let's start with the angles, labeling those. Uh, let's see here. This angle right here is 150 degrees. It is 5 pi over 6. Okay, it's 150 degrees, it's 5 pi over 6. If you look at it, the second quadrant is just a mirror image of the first quadrant, right? So if this right here, if this piece right here is 30 degrees, then this piece is 30 degrees. 
but our angles are measured from the positive x axis. Okay, so that's where the one fifty comes from. Five pi over six. Again, thirty degrees is pi over six. So if that's our reference angle right here, then we subtract one sixth from one. That's where the five over six comes from. Okay. Um, then we've got one hundred and thirty five degrees is the middle angle. It is um, 3 pi over 4. Okay, it is 3 pi over 4 because it's 1 fourth shy of 1. And then we have 120 degrees. And in radians, that is 2 pi over 3. So typically what people struggle with the most with learning the unit circle, with memorizing the unit circle, are the radians. They can pretty much make sense of the degrees, but they struggle with the radians. Notice all the ones in this quadrant, the numerator is one less than the denominator. Okay? Two-thirds, three-fourths, five-sixths. Okay? And if you look at their mirror images in the first quadrant, this is over three. Just trying to point out as many patterns as I possibly can. So if we relate this back to the first quadrant, okay, using the mirror image, these are going to have the exact same coordinates, but what's going to be different? Which is negative? The x is negative. Okay. So you can just copy your coordinates from the first quadrant, but make all your x's negative. Notice one half and square root of three over two are always paired together. They always go together. Um, one's the x, one's the y, depends on whether you're over six or over three. And square root of two over two always goes to square root of two over two. Okay. Okay, quadrant three. <coughs> Um, start with the angles. Okay, uh, this is seven pi over six and two hundred and ten degrees. Okay, we've gone thirty degrees past one eighty, or we've gone pi over six past pi. So we get seven pi over six. Then we have five pi over four. And it is 225 degrees. We've gone 45 degrees past 180. We've gone pi over 4 past pi. And then we have um, 4 pi over 3 and 240 degrees. We've gone 60 degrees past 180. We've gone pi over 3 past pi. So looking at these radians, the numerators are one greater than the denominator. And it's always 6, 4, 3. 6, 4, 3 are all the denominators. So if you're going counterclockwise, then 6, 4, 3. Um, no, bottom is pi. Okay, their coordinates. I'm looking at it from the perspective of just go straight down, okay? Go straight down. This point down here is going to have same coordinates, but both x and y are negative, okay? Um, some people in the past have kind of like drawn a box around as they're doing this. So you go straight across, straight down, okay? They have the same coordinates, but in this uh, quadrant x and y are both negative, so one half negative square root of 3 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2.